To create a Sonic Run animation, you begin by adding an image reference. By going to the Add drop-down menu, then select Image, then Reference. Switch to Draw Mode, then start drawing. Since the Pen tool is selected by default, go to the Layers, then reduce the opacity. Switch to another layer to draw the outline. Go to Sculpt Mode, then smoothen the outline. Switch to Draw Mode, then press and hold the left mouse button to select the Line tool. Press the left mouse button to begin drawing. Then click on the blue points to adjust. Press the middle button to confirm. In order to color, go to the top corner, then click and drag on the plus sign to open another viewport. Select Image Editor, click Open, then select your image. Go to the Image Data Property tab, then click on the plus icon to add a new material. Name the material, then uncheck Stroke, then check Fill. Click on the color, then use the eyedropper to select the color from our image reference. Do the same for the rest of the colors. Select the Paint Bucket tool, then left-click on the image to apply the paint. Create another layer for the body, but before that select the object in edit mode by pressing A to select all, then S, X, negative 1 to flip on the X axis. Do the same for the body. Then in sculpt mode, drag to adjust the points of the fill color. Create another layer for the leg. Then do the same. Also put the arm in its own layer. To apply the rig, switch to Object Mode, then select the Add drop-down menu, then Armature, then Single Bone. Place the bone on the center of the character. Switch to Edit Mode by pressing Tab. Go to the Data Property tab, then on Viewport Display, check Names and In Front. Select the bone, then press E to extrude another bone for the head. Select the torso bone, then right-click, then subdivide. Press Shift-D to duplicate the bone, then press Alt-F to flip the bone. Press E to extrude the shin and the foot bone. To name the bones, press F2. Do the same to the rest of the bones. In order to attach the character to the bones, select the character, 
then shift select the rig. Then press Ctrl P. Select with empty groups. Select the character, then switch to edit mode. In the data property tab, vertex group section, you will see the names of the bones. On the head layer, press A to select all. Then select the head bone, then click assign. For the hair, select the bone name, then switch to weight paint mode, then select the plus icon to add the weights. You can use both methods, however, you have more control applying manually, especially for small and complicated parts. Go to the arm layer and do the same. In the leg layer, select the top vertices, then assign to the thigh bone. Press Ctrl I to invert the selection, then assign to the shin bone. Select the bone in object mode, then switch to pose mode by pressing Ctrl Tab, then test to see if it's working. Next, we need to make the arms and legs flexible. To do this, go to Viewport Display, select B Bone. Select all the leg bones. Then in Bone Property tab, Bendy Bone Segments. In order to change the amount of segments of all the selected bones at the same time, hold Alt, then set the number of segments. All right, for the foot control bones, select the foot bone, then press Alt-P to unparent and disconnect the bone. We do this to avoid problems in future. Press E to extrude another bone. This will be the buffer bone. Select the buffer bone, then the shin bone, then press Control-P to parent to the shin bone. Extrude another bone on the bottom of the shin bone, then unparent it. This will be our IK controller. Go to the knee, then extrude a knee bone, unparent it also. Go to pose mode. Then on the constraints tab, add the inverse kinematic constraint. On the bone section, using the eyedropper, select the IK bone. On the pull target bone, select the knee bone. Set the chain length to two so that it only affects the shin and the thigh bone. Test to see if it's working. Add a copy rotation constraint to the buffer bone targeting the IK bone. If it rotates on the wrong direction, in order to solve this, change the roll property in edit mode. Next, we extrude the toe control bone and the heel bone. Press Alt F to flip the bone. Parent it to the toe control bone. Also parent the IK to the heel bone.
Next, we add a copy rotation constraint to the toe bone, targeting the toe control bone. For it to rotate on the opposite direction, invert on the z-axis. To make the rig user-friendly, we need to add a heel control and a main IK control bone. So in edit mode, extrude the heel control bone and the main IK bone. Parent the heel control bone to the main IK bone. Also parent the toe control bone to the main IK bone. Now select the heel bone, then add a copy rotation constraint targeting the heel control bone. Set target and owner to local space. All right, now add a limit rotation constraint to the heel bone. With minimum value of zero degrees and maximum of 90 degrees on the Z axis, local space. Now for the last constraint, add a copy rotation constraint to the toe control bone targeting the heel control bone. Set target and owner to local space. and invert on the z-axis. Great, select the bone, then add it to a bone collection by pressing M. Hide all the other leg bones in the collection, and finally, it's time for animation. I added an ellipse to mark the placement of the shoes. I then animated the run cycle, the run cycle for Sonic is very different than others since his passing position goes down instead of up. I imported a road and a background from a free 3D model site, then move them to the left to create an animation effect. Go to render, then turn on motion blur. For highlights and shadows, go to effects tab, then add a rim effect. Make sure you switch to render view to see the effects. Add a glow effect to make the eyes glow. All right, we are done. Please feel free to leave a like or a comment if there is any part that you haven't understood. Mm -hmm.